to the twelve tribes of the children of Israel scattered abroad in the name of Jehovah our Creator and Jesus Christ of Nazareth our King Lily of the Valley here and I'm bringing you greeting peace blessing and safety to you and your household we're looking at ancient Egypt lower Egypt and just a part of it when it was great because you have a lot of atheists and people who don't study but they come and tell you the bible is wrong but they never go and check it if you want to know if the bible is right or wrong you have to know the nations that are listed in genesis 10 you have to know the time before the flood after the flood and the patriarchs they prophesied too and egypt became a great nation and it also was prophesied to fall the nation and the place sometimes it's the place and sometimes it's the people who are called Egyptians who are from Ham. So if you have Arabs in Egypt now, it doesn't mean they're ancient Egyptians, even though they have a city there. So a lot of people don't understand that Bible prophecy is cyclical. It can be from generations, different, past, present, or future. Not all the prophecies in the Bible have happened already, but some of them is going to be happening. Like, say, for example... Somebody on my channel is like, oh, Tyrus, Tyre and Sidon, it hasn't happened. They're not destroyed. They're a city now. You got to go back and look up that information as to when it happened and who the Tyre people are and the Tyrus people are and when it happened. Okay. So it said to today, visitors who look for ruins from Phoenician Tyre which is who the Ezekiel was prophesying against, we'd be disappointed for nothing at all remains from that time period. Everything from that era was removed and thrown into the sea to build Alexander's causeway, leaving only shining bare rock. Ezekiel 26 verse 4. Impressive ruins from the Roman period do exist and UNESCO has declared the area a world heritage site. So the next thing the person said, oh, um, let me see. I have to be sending him. This is like this myth buster person who doesn't do any research whatsoever, but come and say the Bible is wrong. And then he quotes from a whole bunch of Edomite, atheists, animists, eugenists. Um, Darwin and so on, all of whom their theories have already been proven wrong because even if they consider themselves to be philosophers, the Greek philosophers learned from the Jews, the Hebrews, and then they mix that with their own saints. They had no writings or historians. They had Homer and Draco for their lawgiver. So poets and Draco, you kind of read what they have to say, nothing about prophecy. So a lot of atheists don't believe in prophecy but we do because we are the children of the prophets so he said prophecy actually disproves the bible fail one isaiah 17 verse 1 he said a prophecy against damascus see damascus will no longer be a city but will become a heap of ruins this never happened and damascus is still inhabited today with over a million people living in the city he doesn't know where to go look to see Damascus was formed by Shem, one of Shem's son. The Damascus of antiquity is no more. It was in ruins. And I'll link in the description box when that happened. If you want to know when a lot of these things happened, get the complete works of Flavius Josephus or search on the internet when was Damascus in ruins. Damascus is in ruins since the Syrian war with the Syrian refugees when they bombed it out. That's even happening right now. So he said, um, after saying God would send Nebuchadnezzar against the city of Tyre to destroy it, the scripture claimed, I will make you a bare rock. You shall be a place for the spreading of nets. You shall never be rebuilt. I am the Lord. I have spoken, declared the Lord God. And Ezekiel 26, 7 to 14. He said that failed, but we have already showed you where that was um accomplish tyre is no more a nation phoenicians don't live there they don't build there so i read all of ezekiel and show us now where you see tyre being great they're not great again and tyre from ham not people in phoenicia 
pretending to be tired, which what Grecians do and Romans do. You can check that with Flavius Josephus against Appian. Okay, so he said, I will dry up the streams of the Nile and sell the land to evil men. By the hand of foreigners will I waste the land and everything in it. I, the Lord, have spoken. He said, this failed. The Nile is over 4,000 miles long, the second longest river in the world, and there's no evidence of this ever happened. That's because you never look for the evidence. Even today, we have riverbeds that water used to run in. They don't have water in them anymore, but maybe a generation or two from now, they will have water. So the Nile can dry up in the past, and it's drying up now. Ethiopia and... um. Egypt, they're almost at war over the water in the Nile drying up. And I'll link my other lesson in the description box. Again, he said, Revelation 22, verse 7, has failed and lying Jesus. Jesus doesn't lie because he's not a man. So this is how 18th and Edomites talk. Supposedly say that, look, I'm coming soon, 2,000 years later and nothing, which is just what we'd expect from a fiction book. Well, fiction is not the Bible. The Bible is prophecy. He doesn't go into Revelation and see how many times a thousand years is listed in there. But he says soon. Soon, the Bible tells us a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day in the most high sight. And nobody knows the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh, you know, because he's going to come like a thief in the night. So I said to him, go to Revelation and tell me how many times Revelation at least a thousand years and he hasn't done it yet but if you want to know when ancient rivers in the sahara you saw the map that i showed you okay this showed egypt close to the sahara it was once fertile the fact that it's desert now doesn't mean that it wasn't fertile before but he said it never happened so ecowatch.com and i think um Radio 1 sent this to me, this comment on, on the Nile video that I did. So he was the one that sent me this link. How the drive up rivers were near to the Sahara. So I'm going to go and look at that, okay? So researchers have discovered ancient river system flowed under Sahara Desert. It would rank 12th largest drainage basin on Earth today. And this is by Cole Melina. This is 2015. So it's a researcher have discovered the remains of a vast ancient river system that ran through what is known today as the Sahara Desert. The river system was so vast that if it were still flowing today, it would be ranked as the 12th largest drainage basin on earth, said the researchers reported in their, in their report published in Nature Communications on Tuesday. Radar images revealed, reveal ancient rivers once flowed through the Sahara Desert. Photo credit, Philippu Paha. Okay. Using radar images taken from a Japanese Earth observation satellite, researchers found ancient riverbeds running from the middle of the Sahara to the Mauritanian coast in West Africa, which appear to have originated in the Atlas Mountains to the north and the Hogar Mountains in the east. This isn't the first time that someone has suggested the Sahara was once wet and humid and in fact teeming with life. In 1957, an expedition led by French ethnologist Henri Lahoud turned up cave paintings of giraffes and elephants. Since then, scientists have postulated that the Sahara was has alternated between wet and dry periods during the, and this the heart is not 300,000 years, or or it is about 7,500, because none of them recorded anything beyond what the Bible tells you. And the Most High is the one who dictates it. As late as 7,000 years ago, cattle, sheep, and goats roamed over green savanna. And that's according to life science. So I need to do a video as to how the demons calculated Earth in terms of millions of years and hundreds of thousands of years. But the Most High doesn't calculate it like that. 
it's in thousand year periods and um i think i already did that i'll link that lesson to who wrote the bible and what timeline it covers so this shows that they have used satellite images to show the sahara had a lot of rivers that have run dry we even have rivers that have run dry Islands disappear out of their places. Mountains too. So I sent him how mountains disappeared. Didn't say anything on that. Oh, body parts can reconnect itself. Because they try to go and prove the Bible wrong. But when you ask them, show me the planet that you believe in and where it comes from and how you can get there, they can't. And Earth is not a planet. Earth is named by Jehovah. So they talk about Earth, but they don't believe in the Bible. But it's from the Bible we learn about earth and Jehovah and who made it. So he's saying Damascus was not a ruinous heap. And Damascus is a ruinous heap right now. And the Syrian refugee crisis from Damascus. Damascus is not inhabited by the ancient Syrians. It, it, it is inhabited by a bunch of people who are mostly Arabs. So... All he has to do is search for these things on the internet because that's where information is these days, you know. So when Damascus was taken away from being a city, that has happened before. And it's in ruins now and it was in ruins then. So let's see. It says Damascus became a heap of ruins, 732 B.C. After a failed attack on Jerusalem by the kings of Syria and Israel, Ahaz of Jerusalem bribes King Tiglath, Pleaser of Syria, to rescue him from the Syro Israeli alliance. Israel, and when it says Israeli, it don't mean these people in the land now because they are Japhetites. So the Israelites, those are the real Jews, and they are black people. The Assyrian kings accept the offer and response. By transforming Syria's capital city of Damascus into a heap of ruins. So all these things, if you want to buy Josephus book or look it up online, these things are easily searched for. So he says um, that Damascus is not in a ruinous heap and it is. This is Damascus now in Syria. They are still bombing and still fighting and the refugee crisis. And those people in Damascus now are not ancient Damascus people because those were black. Syrians, ancient Syrians are black. These are Arabs or mixed race people that live there now. The people who live there now is not the same as the ones who built the city. The ones who built it, they were Shem's children. And these are, they look like Hagarins or Arabs or some are Edomites. But yeah, this is Damascus now. <clears throat> and that bombing has been going on for quite a, a, a few years now. So the prophecies of the Bible are cyclical. They're for a particular people, particular place and time, and for particular kingdoms and empires. To understand the empires and the people and the places, you have to look in Genesis 10 for the nations. For example, if Alexandria is in ruins and it was in Egypt and you see Alexandria in America, don't just go on the map and say, see, Alexandria still exists over there. You know, because people can do that. But you have to know Bible prophecy is for specific place, time, people. And when the Mosai says it's going to happen, it is going to happen or it has already happened. It is happening now or it is coming in the future. Yes, yeah, civil war in Syria. Still happening in 2020 and been happening for the past few years. Okay. So um, this was the video I did. Ancient Egypt prophecy fulfilling and fulfilled foreigners taken over. They speak Arabic Nile drying up. So the Nile is drying up. And you have the war against the Egyptians and the Ethiopians fighting over the water there. So the ancient Egyptians are no more in rulership. Their lands are overrun by mixed bloodline Arabs, Caucasians, etc. They don't speak or write ancient Egyptian, but Arabic and worship idols from Arabia. See, Muslim, that was mentioned in... um the bible but that's what they are 
rule by now. So it's 97.4% of the country's population being Muslims. That's Egypt now. There are no more. You want to find a black Egyptian? You got to be digging deep to find one. And even so, they have to be claiming now that they are black because they say they are now white people. So when the most I say Egypt is going to be prophesied against, it's going to happen. And here you go. Rivers run. And they dry up and they run again. And also that's happening to the Euphrates as well. So, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to.